Hey everyone! In this video, we're going to develop a React app which uses a TensorFlow.js model to transform images. In the previous parts, we've trained and converted the model, so check them out if you want to learn more. As the first step, we have to install Node.js if you don't have it already. To do so, we go to the website and get the installer. Now we can create a React project, which I will do in this folder, part 3. So I open the terminal and navigate into it. We use Create React App to develop the app since it simplifies setup and development by abstracting away configurations of tools such as Babel and Webpack. Just run npx create react app and then the name of the app, in my case tfjs app, and wait. And then we can inspect what Create React App created for us. So when we look into this folder part 3, tfjs app, there are some files and folders. And when you look into the source folder, you see a lot of files. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to delete all of them. This just simplifies things in the next steps. As the last setup step, let's install TensorFlow.js. So inside of the app, just run npm install tensorflow.js. And now all setup steps are completed. Before we begin with the implementation of the app, let's think about the structure for a moment. We need three JSX elements, one for the image input, one for the image output, and a third one for the button to run the model. We combine these three elements in an element called app and render it. To implement this structure, we have to create a file called index.js in the source folder. This is the expected entry point of an app created with create react app. So I've added this file here already, and this is the code that we'll need to render the element app. And we import it from here, which means we have to create a file called app. Now I've also added an image here, and this is the image that we will use as an example. Now going back to the file app.js, we add some import statements, and you can see here that we have the image included as well. And then we can write code for our component app, like so. And what we can do now is we can actually run a development version of it, so we type npm run start, and then we see a blank screen. And that makes total sense because we haven't defined anything inside of the component. The component is blank. So let's fix that by adding the components I described earlier. We have a title, and then we have one image container. We have a canvas for the output and the button. And there they are. So we have the image, the button, and the canvas is not visible because it's blank. We didn't draw anything to it. So that makes sense. Note that I've commented out the import statement for the CSS file. The file doesn't exist yet, so it would produce an error and we wouldn't see anything. But actually, we can fix this by just creating the file and leaving it blank for now. So, All right, now that we have the elements, let's add the model next. To do so, we create a method here called runModel. And we link it to the button with onClick. Next, we load the model. When we look at the documentation, we can find two possible ways to do so. So there is load graph model, and there is load layers model. Now, load layers model says that this mode is not applicable to TensorFlow saved models and their converted forms. So we have that. So we should use load graph model instead. And to do so, you just add the path to wherever your model is. So you can use the same path. This is a public repository and it should work. But if you want to use it with your own model, just replace the path. 
And what's important here is that if you host your model on GitHub, then you need to use the raw form. Otherwise, it probably won't work. And also the repository should be public. Now that we have the model, let's focus on feeding it an image. When we look at the model definition in the first part, we will see that the expected input shape is a batch dimension and 256, 256, and three color channels. And the pixel values are in the range of zero to one. To transform this image here into the shape, we first load it into an HTML image element with the dimension 256 by 256, like so. And then we convert it into a tensor with the from pixel method, that's a tensorflow.js method. And then we do the scaling and here we add the batch dimension. And finally, we cast this whole thing to flow32. Once we have this tensor, we can run it through the model like so. There's a simple predict method uh, like in Python. The model outputs a four dimensional tensor in the range of minus one to one. Why? When we look back at the model, we'll see that the final activation is a tang. To draw this tensor in the canvas, we have to transform it. So the first thing we'll do is we'll remove the batch dimension and then we scale it to the range of zero to one. So that we, that's what we do here. Finally, we get a reference to the canvas. We defined its ID here. So we'll just get the reference by ID. And then we use the two pixels method, that's a TensorFlow.js method, to draw this tensor in the canvas. And that's it. So the method is complete. And before we can try it, we have to link it to the button like so. And now we can try it. So let's see what happens. And there it is. All right, so we have the functionality of the app implemented, but this looks kind of boring here. So let's fix that by adding some styling. And we go into this app CSS file that I prepared and I've prepared some code to make it look nice. I won't go into detail. You can check out the code that I've linked in the description if you're interested in what exactly I did here. But when we look at the app now, it looks much nicer. And that's it. We've seen how we can integrate a TensorFlow model into a React app. The app we've developed is very basic since it's focused on the model integration. To make it more exciting, you can use the code we've developed and extend it. For example, you could add different models or add an image upload functionality or something entirely different. Thank you for watching and I hope you find this useful. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. See you next time.